This is Nick Norton, Dr. Nick Norton to those who observe, and I am teaching Pro Tools at Santa Monica College this semester, and I'm making some videos that I thought my students would find helpful to go from not knowing the software at all to being pretty good at it, and I thought it would be cool to post them in a playlist on YouTube so that if you don't know Pro Tools, you can learn the software. So let's get started. This is a session uh, for a killer song called Spaceman that I sent out to my students, and I hope YouTube doesn't pull it down if it like matches the audio. Um, and the very, very first thing we're going to learn, I told you this is going to be for beginners, is play and pause. Up here, we call this the transport bar. We've got buttons for it right here that you could click but no one ever clicks those. You just use the space bar. I just pressed space to start it playing and I pressed space again to stop it playing. This little uh, set of arrows right here with the blinking white line is called the playhead. And if you click in different places uh, along the timeline or in the session, you can play different parts of the song. I just clicked in the same place. Let's click somewhere else. If you want to go to the very beginning, you press the return key, and then you can press space and play from the start of the song. Something to take note of is this little icon right here, which says insertion follows playback. If that is on and the end key turns it on or off, I'm all about using shortcuts. Uh, the point at which your playback starts will move based on when you stop it. So uh, what's going to happen? I'm going to hit space and let it play and hit space again. And you'll see the playhead will then be here instead of back where it started. So I usually keep that off when I'm working on music uh, and on sometimes when I'm like spotting sound effects. Uh, cool. You'll notice that I uh, can click on things in the workspace here by holding my mouse down and dragging across them. That is because I currently have the selector tool selected up here. There are a couple of other tools that we use regularly. The trimmer is here and the grabber is here. A lot of the time I like to have the multi-tool on, but we're just only going to use the selector for this video. And you can select these tools uh, by using the F6, F7, and F8 uh, keys on your keyboard. Um, so yeah, if I've got the selector tool selected, I can use it to highlight an area like this and play back what is in there, or uh, do a, an operation on whatever is highlighted. Like if I want to put a fade in, see the fade only goes through uh, the end of the highlight right there. I did that by pressing the F key. Um, with this tool, you can't grab a whole region. For that, you want to use the grabber tool, like that. Um, yeah, okay. Moving on. Oh yeah, it's worth noting also that uh, the audio that will play back. Will only be for the length of whatever you have selected, unless you just have selected nothing. All right, so uh, a really important thing that is true in every DAW is uh, the solo and mute functionality of every track. So you see on the left, we have these little S and M buttons here. Those stand for solo and mute, and we can make our tracks bigger just by clicking and dragging. See, it turns into a little up down arrow, um, and you see some other stuff appears. Yeah, great. Uh, so if you wanna hear a track by itself, you can click the solo button. Here, let's, let's solo out the main vocal. That's easier to hear, actually. From the floor this time, cause they're calling me by my name. You get the idea. Um, mute does what you think it does. 
and now I have muted the main vocal. So we're not hearing it, we unmute it, and we hear it, we solo it, and we hear only that. I want to point out that clicking on stuff all the time takes a long time. Mouse moving from here to here is like a quarter second and then another quarter second back. And that seems really uh, short, but when you multiply it by your entire life, you lose like a year. So the better thing to do is to learn your shortcuts. And when you've got a track selected, Shift S is solo and Shift M is mute. So you can just scroll on down here. You want to hear this, shift S space bar. You want to hear this, shift S space bar. And so forth. And you just uh, click a solo button again or shift S again on the track that's currently selected to clear them all. That's probably enough on that topic for the moment. Okay, you notice we've got this. We're now going to talk about the grid and a little bit about musical time. Uh, you notice when I click and drag that a whole measure gets selected. You can see our measure numbers up at the top here, 16, 17, 18. They call these bars in the UK. Um, I think bars mean something different. Anyway, <laughs> uh, to change the amount of space you are selecting, you come up here to where it says grid. You can uh, show it or not by clicking on the word itself. And then with the drop down here, you could change it to say a quarter note if we only want to select quarter notes. I should find some actual music to do this on, shouldn't I? What do we got? Oh, this is probably drums. Yeah, cool. So if I wanted to play a measure of drums, I could do that and select, I don't know, this. Now let's do this, start of a phrase better. And then if I wanted to play half a measure of drums, I could set the grid to a half note and select only half a measure. You get the idea. If I wanted to uh, loop what is currently selected, Command L, hmm, had that wrong, Command Shift L, and uh, that is Control Shift L on a PC. I'm on a Mac, so I uh, Command is always Control. Uh, turns loop on and off and you can see up here the play button gets a little loop icon next to it when you press that so if we do that you see we loop just that little bit of music just that half bar because that's what our grid is set to and what we've selected so if I want to loop this come over here and select it shift s for solo loop is already on And that's really useful for when you're just like trying to EQ a single sound. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna turn loop off by pressing Command Shift L. I'm gonna press Shift S to unsolo that. And I think uh, you get the idea about the grid. Uh, if you're doing music that is not on a grid, like maybe, uh, maybe classical music is usually not on a grid or spoken word, there's no reason to be on a grid. You can come over here and press slip and that makes it so you can just select freely. Uh, and you can get on in here and grab just like, you know, one drum hit and delete it if you want to. Command Z or Control Z on a PC is undo. That's a very important shortcut. You're gonna use that all the time. So remember, slip grid up here. You can use the, not the escape key, the tilde key to scroll through them. Don't worry about shuffle and spot right now. Definitely don't use shuffle for anything. Um, okay, the last little bit for this how to get around in Pro Tools video has to do with uh, the timelines and how we measure time and zooming in and out. So up at the top, you can see we've got bars and beats. So if we zoom in, um, I'm just gonna say right now, T and R are zoom in and zoom out. As long as this little guy is lit up, your shortcuts will apply to this window. This A to Z thing is like, turn on the keyboard shortcuts button. Uh, so yeah, T zooms in, R zooms out. And most people who are fast at Pro Tools just kind of keep their index and middle finger there on the left half of the computer keyboard and keep their right hand on the mouse and you just use shortcuts. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, so we were talking about the counter and time. Time runs from left to right, as you probably could assume. Uh, the measure number and beat 
and tick or subdivision or however we're doing it uh, is up there. If you would rather count in minutes and seconds, you can switch that by clicking this little triangle and changing it. And you see this uh, minutes and seconds bar gets highlighted. There is also time code, which we use in film and TV. Uh, sometimes you use feet and frames in film and TV, but not really anymore. Uh, and then I've seen some people work in samples, particularly if you're measuring like phase. Uh, but yeah, I, I tend to leave it in minutes or seconds or bars and beats. Or you can show the sub counter and get the best of both worlds. These timelines at the top show you where you are in the song. Uh, as you can see, they're the bars and beats in minutes and seconds. If you want to show or hide them, you click this little guy. And, uh, okay, let's add time code. Cool, and let's get rid of minutes and seconds. Nice, and I don't, the tempo's never changing because it's like radio rock. So let's get rid of that tempo thing. Uh, cool, so you can see how you can customize that to what you like to work with. I just pressed Command S, uh, which is save, Control S on a PC. And you should do that like essentially every 30 seconds, uh, just in case your system crashes. All right, I finally just zoomed in and zoomed out because I do that as a nervous habit. Again, those are the R and T keys. To make tracks bigger and smaller, you can click and drag them or press Control, arrow up and arrow down. Uh, on a PC, that is Start, arrow up and arrow down. And it is possible that that does something else on your computer. Like on Mac, I think it uh, shows all your desktops or something like that. So you have to uh, deactivate that in your system preferences if you want to use it. I recommend using it because it's real helpful when you're like, oh, I want to see these tracks. You know. Um, oh, all right. Very, very last thing for this video. And then we'll move on. Uh, you see how I selected these tracks by dragging and they all got selected over here? That's because this little light is on. Link track and edit selection. If for some reason... You want to select this and work on it, yet mix these. Uh, you would turn that off. I have never found a reason to turn it off. So, yeah, that's it for the first video. I would suggest if you're one of my students, you go click and play and click and play and come over here and solo it. And That's a little quiet. Come down here and solo this. And, I don't know, delete something and undo it. Just get comfortable because uh, you don't want to be worrying about how the software works when you're trying to like record something musical that's happening right that moment. Um, so fluency is what we're after. And in the next video, we're going to show you how to start editing and also using the multi-tool. Cool. See you later.